Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habitifillah. A question was asked, I'm a 17-year-old boy from a European country wanting to study the deen but is restricted by my parents. Do I obey them by staying here in this fitna or do I leave for an Islamic country like Saudi Arabia where I can practice my deen? If I stay, it could mean I'd fall into major sins. I once heard that prevention is the cure. I've not really been involved in a lot of madness, but I think it can all fall apart soon. We're living in a time when Islam, where Islam needs scholars to motivate people, not football players or engineers. I would benefit this ummah and future generation by studying supererogatory knowledge like hadith, fiqh, etc. But if I had to stay, then I think that's a knockout for me. It's not realistic to stay patient because here is beyond my control and besides my family isn't that practicing, so I would go down with them. I've asked people, but they don't seem to get me, give me an answer. It's a messy situation, but can you act as a judge in this matter and give a verdict, please? And thank you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you with ilm al nafi rizqan tayyibu amin al mutaqabil and bless us all with the same and bless us all with khair and bless us all with ikhlas with the bad Allah sunnah and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. First and foremost, no, I can't give you a verdict. That is for Ahlul Fatwa, you know, in those maybe imams and others who are in positions and who have the prerequisite knowledge. But I can offer you some advice in general. And what I will say, this is a common question, but first and foremost, as you mentioned, the super, supererogatory knowledge that you want to attain. First and foremost, the wajib, there's a qaida or a, a principle that the ulama they mention, which is first and foremost, that we don't make taqdeem, uh, taqdeem al uh, uh, or uh, we don't give preference to that which is not wajib over that which is wajib, and it's wajib for you to obey your parents. Allah subhanahu wa taala says in Kitab al Karim, "Muqabba Rabbuka Allah ta'abdu illa yahu wa bil wadidain ihsana." Allah subhanahu wa taala coupled along with tawheed. Uh, the worship of him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, alone, uh, being obedient to one's parents. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And your Lord has commanded you, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا And your Lord has commanded you to worship none except him. And that means as an affirmation of Tawheed and a negation of shirk. And to uh, and and be obedient and and righteous and 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 kind and respectful to one's parents. That all that fits into ihsan. And so, with that being the case, we know that it's an obligation, and one of the major sins is to leave that. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in another hadith. In a hadith, he mentioned about, and there's countless hadith and ayat to illustrate the obligatory uh, duty of being obedient to one's parents and serving them. And with that being the case, that is from the wajib. As far as seeking knowledge, the Prophet said, that seeking knowledge is an obligation upon every Muslim, Muslimah, that every Muslim has to know a certain degree of knowledge uh, which is wajib. For example, you need to know how to pray. You need to know how to make wudu. You need to know how to, if you gain some money enough that gets to the level of zakat, then you need to know how to pay zakat. You need to know how to do the wajib, those things that you are uh, commanded to do by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you need a certain degree of knowledge. However, that does not mean you have to leave to gain that knowledge. Now, and especially now, unlike before, now there are so many different ways to seek knowledge that the internet is just full of good and bad information. But there's enough good information. There's so many books the students of knowledge have explained. There's so many lessons and lectures that have been translated as well from the ulama and things for the iman and the heart and everything and fatawa and books. There, it's just countless for free. So there's no excuse for not knowing a lot of that wajib. You don't have to travel for that. And then there's also the contact for those who have access to students of knowledge and imams and du'at that are giving da'wah in their locality. 
And then there's also the ability to do like we're doing now through the YouTube and through other uh, uh, social media uh, applications to be able to contact people who you trust that may have some knowledge, something to offer you. There's plenty of options. So, yes, you want to save yourself and get out of that environment. You find it difficult. But so far, you've held it down and you're 17. Walillah alhamdulillah. May Allah preserve you. But there's a wajib. There's something that's a greater obligation. And that's being obedient to your parents and serving them. So, what I advise you, as other people have asked this question, and we talked about it a little bit prior to this, is that you should strive your best to be obedient to your parents and try to show them the benefits of going and seeking knowledge. Another point I want to mention from a point of, of, uh, of uh, dunya, plain and simple, as clear as possible as I can be and as realistic as possible, you're not really going to be able to come to Saudi Arabia like that. If you do not get into the Islamic universe, one of the Islamic universities or something, or you come as a worker, you will not be coming to Saudi Arabia. That's just the way it is. Saudi Arabia is very strict about entering their country. And that is the case for a lot of the world, a lot of the Muslim countries, a lot of the world. You need, you need passports and you need provisions. And I advise that you get skills. When you're a young person, get skills because it puts you in such a better position. I know many people who came here to either try to make hijra here in Saudi Arabia and other Muslim countries, <clears throat> but the things have changed so much and it's so hard to live as an, as an expat in these places. Many of these places, they don't want you here. It's not about anything else. And you can fear Allah as much as you can. Tawakkal ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Perhaps Allah will make a way for you to stay in a place like this, but most of the people they find that they have to leave. They either they try to make hijra and they had to leave. I know me, I know countless. I literally know at least hundreds, if not more, from all over the West and other countries. And on top of that, those who seek knowledge. So my advice to you: concentrate on getting some skills because skills and finances allow for you to do. Those things of Talib al-Ilm. You know, many of us, we wanted to do the same. We had a chance to go away, and then we had to go back, running out of money, and then wanting to go, but not having the tawfiq to get into a university or what have you, and having to come as workers and do Talib al-Ilm. But even a lot of those days are no longer, those, the, those, that's a whole another door I could open up, but we're not going to necessarily go into that. But my point is, is to prepare yourself. Whatever you're trying to do, prepare yourself. If you want to make hijrah in the future, prepare yourself. Don't just save a few hundred dollars, or even a couple thousand dollars, and just run off and think you're going to stay. Maybe you will. If your intention is, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala aid you in that, perhaps. But I just know many people who it just doesn't work like that. So my thing is be realistic. Save your money. Protect your deen. Seek knowledge to the best of your ability there. And Allah will open it up for you. And subhanAllah, every thing that I wanted really bad, most of the things, the big things, especially related to going to seek knowledge and going overseas and things like this, when things, doors close, Allah always made a way for me to do that. It was just, it's, So that's just... A blessing Allah gave me. Another last point I want to mention, because you mentioned you wanted to do this, and you want to teach, and we need fuqah. Yes, we need this. We need students of knowledge. And I can tell you about countless students of knowledge who are not doing anything, and Allah didn't give them to tawfiq to gain the knowledge to be able to, and, and positions to where they could go back to go and give da'wah. And I don't mean just a paycheck, but I mean just you're struggling. So you, you have to sweep floors and you have to do that more than 40 hours a day. Who are you going to call? You don't even have time or the money to afford it to go to the khutbah. So then that wears on them and many people. So it's really tawfiq. And that's why I respect those du'at and those students of knowledge that are back in their various countries, whether it be Nigeria to whether it be and scholars in Nigeria and scholars in uh, wherever they go. Afghanistan, Pakistan, America, the UK, those brothers who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them to the hufiq, to seek knowledge and to go back and give da'wah and do that. Because that's tawfiq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because there are those who have knowledge 
and they weren't blessed like that. And they slid away. So I'm not trying to discourage you, but I'm trying to put this path in front of you to let you know how serious it is. That's why those students of knowledge should be respected because they strove with their body, some of them, and they sacrificed their wealth and some of them sacrificed their families. Some of them sacrificed their health to gain what they gain. And then they're still teaching people. So that's Tofik from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are those, I know people who were seeking knowledge memorized, did this, did this, and some even left Islam, apostated. And some of them, so it's all, it comes down to the tawfiq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I say, don't give up, be real, serve your parents, strive if that's what you want. You may not come now, but you need to save some money. You need to prepare yourself for that because tawakkal Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all affairs, the ulama say, a tawakkal that it is relying upon Allah, it is making effort to do something and putting your heart and your trust at the results, leaving it with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you make effort. If I want to, if you want to get married, for example, and save yourself, sitting in the masjid and saying you're making to walk is not the way. But rather, you need to also strive. You need to have some money to, to take care of the family. And you need to go out and search. Ask, uh, ask around or people in your community or what have you. You need to search and make the effort. And then rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Put your heart and your trust with Allah. And that's with anything. So same with the Talib al-Ilm. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.